I see that he is online. Hopefully his connection holds out. Hey, Andrew. I am actually at the office, so if the connection drops, it's a it's a bigger problem than <laughs> I'm aware of. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're able to join us today. Thank you so much. So you're part of our test team, correct? Yeah, so I'm an estate with Mylia. Um, what does that involve? I'm, what do you what do you do? You go in and push buttons, make sure everything works? Yeah, more or less try to automate <laughs> that process as well as much as I can, just so that I don't have to push as many buttons so many times. Uh, also do a little bit of, I guess, amateur photography, but that I feel like that would be a discredit to actual photographers. So I'll just go ahead and say, I just like to take pictures. Um, <laughs> don't sell yourself short. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so today I uh, wanted to talk to you guys about uh, some of the search and filter functionality that we have that you guys might not know too much about. Um, awesome. So I'll go you ahead. You want to go ahead and share your screen? Yeah, give me a second here. Perfect. Does it look good? Yep, looks great. All right, cool. Uh, so as we know, MyLeo offers a bunch of different paradigms you can approach to organizing your photos. So you got stuff like your full overview. It's going to show your file system, albums, your people. It's going to have your person containers based off of your face tagging, you know, your massive GPS, et cetera. And Miley is also going to pick up a lot of information off of the metadata of every photo. So you'll get things like uh, your camera model, your lens that you used, ISO, things from the title caption, et cetera. So as you're working with Miley and organizing your stuff, uh, Mylio is going to be adding more and more information to each of your photos to make them easier to kind of categorize and parse. Um, so I wanted to show you guys how we can really leverage that to find photos that you're looking for. Uh, so let's say, for instance, I'm trying to find a photo of me and one of my friends uh, during a trip to Japan or something. So I can go in here, and this would be one approach, but I could go in here and open up the maps, open up this container, and we'll see there's a lot of photos in here, just normal touristy stuff that's not really relevant to what I'm looking for. You know, we got food and places and things like that. But we can narrow down our search with this filter. So I'll go ahead and I know I want to see pictures with me and pictures with my friends. So we'll add her as well. And that's narrowed it down quite a bit. Uh, but, you know, there's still some more we can do because this is a pretty large spread of time. So I know the photos I'm looking for would probably be taken with uh, my Pixel because it's just the newer phone that I had at the time. So we can also add that to our filters to further limit that. So we've done quite a lot, uh, but the filters might not give us the kind of granularity that we're really looking for. Um, at least not with these default options. So that's what the custom is for. Uh, custom works a lot like the search does. So I'm just gonna go ahead and switch to the search to show you really how flexible and how granular you can get, uh, even from all photos. So this is gonna be searching through my entire library. Okay. Um, so with the search, the way search works is you're gonna search for an expression and that expression is gonna com be comprised of a term and a value. So in our case, if I wanted to look for pictures of me, we can have the term person and the value Andrew. Uh, you can also combine these expressions using operators like and, or, or in to add another expression. So we'll add our person, Vicky. And that will have filtered out all the photos except for those containing both me and Vicky. So that's a little bit different from the filter that we were seeing earlier, which would have been using the or. Um, so this might also seem a bit finicky to have to type in person. So you don't actually have to type in the term every time. Um, Mylio will know to search in specific areas if you leave a value without its term. So whenever I leave a value term. A couple of things you read about this, this. We, were, we were just talking to Heath. And so he's going to be working a lot on the search and filter to make this a little friendlier. But for now, if you guys are looking for it, it go into this um, finding photos in the manual. We go into all of these different search terms that Andrew's talking about. Yeah. 
So Sorry. I've removed the term because that's a little bit finicky and Mylio will know to automatically look through all of the people, the categories, the keywords, titles, OCR, as we've mentioned, things like that. Um, we can also expand this search given that this becomes its own expression here and add an in clause and add the place, which would be Japan. So when you leave the value term list on the right side of an in clause, Mylio is gonna know to search through folders, albums, uh, places and dates. So Mylio is already gonna know that this is probably gonna be a date, or not a date, but a place or a folder, which are these results here. Nice. Um, so in addition to the, all these operators, you can further modify things. So let's say, uh, maybe I'm not looking for pictures of me and Vicky. I just want pictures of Vicky and I want to make sure that I am not in that picture. So I can add that not operator and that'll do just that. So I'll find pictures of Vicky with other people. It'll find pictures of Vicky alone, but I won't be there and that isn't sure. Um, That's really cool. We can also expand this search again, take it further to include dates. So now I'll be only showing things from 2015. And you can see like as this search expression is getting larger and larger, it might be a bit, it might be getting a little bit more complicated to figure out what it is exactly that Mylio is looking for. So we can utilize parentheses to really uh, help make sure that we know what Mylio is trying to find. So we can do something like this. So let's say we're looking for pictures of me and Vicky, or me and my other friend, Chung in, say, 2016 or 2019. So you can see that search has yielded pictures of me and Vicky. We got pictures of me and Unchung. We got pictures of all three of us together. And these are only from the years 2016 and the year 2019. That's really cool. And I'm just gonna throw out one thing that maybe you can cover here, Angela, if you wanted to save those, an album, or maybe save the search too, right? Right, so if you go to that drop down arrow at the end, you can save the search. So it's at the end of the search bar. And let's see, that's uh, the, it's the pin at the right, I believe, right? Go to go to the first thing there, the little time arrow, the history. Oh, the time arrow. That's that's where I was. I haven't done that much. Yeah, and so that's imports, and then you're right. Then I think it's the pin button is next. So the pin button will show you ones you've done, and then you can actually save it. So there's all the ones he's done, and if he mm -hmm. clicks a pin button, it's a save search, and it will remember it. Exactly. Great tip. And then if you wanted to create an album with these, you could do um, a command or control A to select all of them and then right click on it and save it to an album. So there you go, add to album and you can create a new album to describe that and however you wanted to put that together. It's really cool. And yeah. remember, albums don't move anything on your hard drive. They're just a virtual collection, like a playlist. So you can make as many albums as you want and nothing moves on your drive. Exactly. So I was also uh, mentioned earlier that Mylio is picking up stuff from the metadata of the pictures. Um, and that can be really handy. And we can find some of that stuff here. And you can use this to really enhance your search as well. So a lot of these options here, uh, like the import source, import date, the camera model, things like that are actually clickable. So if you click on that, they'll auto-populate a search for you. And what that's doing is pulling up all the pictures I've taken with the Pixel 3. Uh, another place you can find more of these kinds of things is in your dashboard library stats. You have people, places, uh, file types. So I can go in here. If I wanted to find all my files, I've just file type ARW, you can click on that. And that's populated a search with file types matching that extension. And again, these expressions are combinable with other expressions using our operator. So let's say we want a file type with me and um, and is matching that extension. We just type that in, and there we go. Uh, so 
So you can see how a lot of these, these terms with the file types and camera models could be pretty useful if you have situations where you've got cameras that you use for specific things, or maybe you have a lens, because um, you can also search by the lenses as well. Maybe you have lenses that you use specifically for, for portraits or landscapes or that kind of thing. This can really help you organize and find exactly what you're looking for. Um, some of the other terms you can look for is also uh, whether or not you've edited something. So you got all of my photos I've edited here. Um, yeah. Nice. Uh, so there's also the wildcard option. Uh, so let's say I have a bunch of pictures of cats, but I can never really be consistent on how I refer to them. So the wildcard operator is used uh, to replace uh, any combination of numbers or letters after a string. So let's say I got K-I-T-T -T here and the asterisk, I'll hit enter. So here I've called this one a kitty. This one I've called a kitten. These are kittens. Uh, we've got a box of kittens, kitty treats. This one's a kitty cat. And you can see because I left that term list as well, uh, this is going through and taking all the results from title, captions, keywords, et cetera, and putting them up here. Um, so another cool thing we can do with the search is uh, we have ranges for our searches. So you can use the greater than or less than symbols as well as the greater than or less than equal to. Um, and you can use this to find one directional ranges for that are alphabetic or numeric. Uh, so let's say you wanted to remember how things were in, you know, the long before times or whatever. We can go ahead and type less than 2020. And there you go. That's how things were prior to that year. <laughs> also have ranges. Can be accomplished with the square or curly brackets. So if I wanted to see what I was doing during Christmas of that year, uh, to, let's go out to New Year's and go ahead and type that in. And that'll give us all the results between Christmas and New Year's of that year. Oh, that's cool. And again, you can save these as a pin search. You can put these into an album. So there's a lot of different ways. You could even create an event so if you knew that you were traveling between those dates, you could create an event, lots of different ways to organize and be able to access these photos, depending on how you wanna do that. Yeah, and then the more, the more ways you organize your photos, the more ways you're gonna to have to uh, search back to them as well. So the more you use Smiley with your pictures, the easier it gets to kind of fine tune the way you look for things. Um, so if you have a preferred method, you know, if you prefer to use events or categories or maybe you prefer to use people as a maps, uh, yeah, those will be entirely viable options for how you want to approach things. Um, so awesome. MyLeo makes it real flexible for how it is you want to approach finding all of your photos and organizing them as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for sharing all of that with us. I think, are we um, about ready for our next guest to come in, Rich? Yeah, and Andrew, that was great. I love, and you really did a wonderful job just pointing out how powerful search is. And then when you save those searches or share, save albums, it's there. And then remember, we've got all these share options. So having all these pictures of ourselves with our friends is great. Sending to our friends is even better because it makes them happy and it gives us that time in between when we get to see them next time. So Andrew, thank you so much. And Thanks for helping make Milio better. So we're yeah, glad no problem. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks for being here.